What do you think of when you think of Hungary? Perhaps you think of the rich dishes using simple ingredients. Like the paprika-based stew goulash. So your mother used to make goulash Absolutely. like you're making it now. Absolutely. Or delicious grab-and-go street foods. Maybe you think of the Hungarian affinity for chocolate. Whoa! In the last decade, Hungary has gone through a culinary revolution, putting modern spins on their supercratic dishes, especially within the city of Budapest. I'm going to three places to get a sense of what the city has to offer. From a restaurant using historic recipes to form a sustainable ecosystem, to a bar using culture to inform taste. And who knows, maybe we'll snag something sweet in between. So, let's eat. After a short flight from London, I got into Budapest late last night and went straight to the hotel. It's always exciting landing somewhere when it's dark and you get to experience the sights of the city fresh the next day. And today, I'm going to explore the local food and drink scene of Budapest. Morning. Yeah. Today, I'm eating my way around Budapest. Where, where do you recommend I should start? Yeah, okay, I can recommend you some place. Okay. I can recommend you to visit the Grand Central Market and you can go around and you can find some uh, great food. Can I take this? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. While traditional Hungarian dishes are simple, using basic ingredients to create really accessible food, recent economic growth has led restaurateurs to reinvent this city. They're honoring the country's history while developing unique and memorable dishes. My first destination is Rustico, a family-owned restaurant inspired by the taste and decor of the Hungarian countryside. I'm about to meet the man behind Rustico, Georgi Molnar. Hey, I'm Jesse. Hi, I'm George. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Um, this place looks incredible. Thank you very and much. And I've heard a lot about Rustico. This is where I'm going to have proper traditional Hungarian food. Yes. Right? If you want, I can take down to our kitchen and introduce us to our chef. Now, we're now. Yes. Our Absolutely love it. Great, come with me, please. Thank you. Here, all ingredients are quite literally farm to table, harvested from Hungarian farmers to delight the taste of city dwellers and visitors alike. So your your goulash recipe, did you get it from, has it been handed down your family? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. My mother. So your mother used to make goulash Absolutely. like you're making it now? Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. That's the foundations of yep. loads of Hungarian yeah, yeah, yeah. dishes. Oh, amazing, okay. Go on, get me a good bit. Thank you very much. A little bit spicy. Ooh. Mm. Now, I feel like I need. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go upstairs, have a full meal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is the that I've heard so much about the chicken puppy. Yes. Okay, where where is this recipe from? Are, are these very countryside recipes? Basically, okay. this is uh, what you can find the the regular chicken paprika receipt. So it's mm. like not a new wave, not the fusion uh, one. Right. So it's like the pure traditional. Yes, yes, yes. And and where are you sort of getting your ingredients from? Are they local? Yes, uh, our kitchen sources it locally, our chef Jolt. Uh, he works with the small farmers. And I guess that's because you're super passionate about sort of keeping things sustainable. Yes, by supporting small farmer uh, markets and small suppliers, you can uh, help them to grow. So what's next for well, Rustico? We would like to have our own uh, ecosystem outside of the outside of the city, and then uh, we can bring everything from our land. Uh, for the first step and first five, six years, we would like to have only veg and fruits, and then we would like to have war with yeah. it. That'd be pretty awesome. Hungary has a long history of making inventive chocolates. And I tell you what, after that savory goulash from Rustico, I'm in the mood for something sweet. I'm heading to my Chocchi, where Vivian and her father have created award-winning bonbons. Hi, hello. Hey, how are you doing? 
I'm fine, thanks. What can I get for you? Well, I've heard a lot about this place and your chocolates. <laughs> And I really must try some. Let me pick you five. Thank you very much. Is it dealer's choice or? Yeah. I'm going to pick this one for you. For yeah, first. that's a beautiful one. And this is our strongest booze one. Okay. It's with rum. Are you okay with rum? Uh, more than all right with rum. Okay. Love it. And uh, have you ever tried palinka before, the Hungarian spirit? No. Okay. Yeah. I hope you will like this one. And, uh, oh yeah, this one. And uh, let's pick uh, a new wave version. Yeah, one of these little glossy ones. Yeah, here. Let's try them out. It's awesome. Yes, please. Thank you, Vivian. <laughs> Which one next on my adventure? That should be the boozy one, I think. Put a truffle into your mouth and cool. smash it. Escape the end of the pig bed. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> and it's strong. It's 80% straw rum and definitely. It's 80%? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, we're getting the coconut yeah. with the rum. Yeah. Okay, now I'm on like an island. All of these chocolates are locally made in Budapest. This one is a Palinka version, as I mentioned, one of our awards winners. So if you bite it half, you can see the texture. We created okay. three layers during the production. Uh, one with dark chocolate and palinka. Wow. The middle layer is a wow. tiny marzipan coin with palinka, and the top is a sour cherry layer. That's sour cherry. <laughs> we, we create a velvety coat and decorate it with liquid gold. Of course. Okay, and last but not least. Chili, peanut, dark chocolate, and roasted onion. Where do you get like the inspiration for these flavors? How's that work? We are weirdos. Oh, you're weirdos. Yeah, oh, right. we, we like to <laughs> uh, to adventure these new stuff. I mean, we use uh, several kind of peppers, roast pear with balsamic vinegar, other kind of spices, usually not paired with chocolate. And it takes a lot of time, I mean, for months, to create this chocolate. Let's actually see if this onion one tastes good and see if your dad's month work was worthwhile. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Hmm. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of onion. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not for everyone, of course. That's why we have a lot of classy taste, but we have uh, we have this these interesting guests who are looking for these kind of mm. chocolates. How long has it been like a family business in chocolate? Uh, the passions came from my father and he learned everything in Belgium more than 30 years ago and brought okay. it all how to Hungary. I grew up among chocolate, you know. Can you, I, can you remember a life without like chocolate like this Definitely, in your life? No, definitely not. No, always no, been No, there. I have been in this family business for 10 years now. Okay. So yeah. Thank you so much Vivian, that's been amazing. Thank you, yeah. see you dear. See you, thank you, bye. Bye, have a nice day. I'm taking the tram from Pest to Buda, formerly two cities brought together at the end of the 19th century and today exists as a cultural force. Where Pest is bustling, Buda offers a quieter, more residential landscape. Within its greener streets sits Zatior, a new take on a ruin bar. The restaurant's history dates back to the early 1900s, where it was a creative hotspot that attracted prominent thinkers and cultural icons of the time. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Welcome Tibor. here. Yes, yeah, this is Tibor. Hey, nice to meet you. Bad. You're the chef. Yes, yes. After a 40 year stint as a retail space, Zacho has re emerged with a gastronomic expertise, thanks to its new owner, Tibor, and his head chef, Balint. Together, they have created a menu inspired by the local scene that I just cannot wait to discover. Yes, cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Cool. Tell me about the history of this place. At the beginning of the 19th century, cool. uh, this coffee house was famous because of the creatives, the authors, writers and painters who came here. But after uh, 30 years or something, the communism came and uh, they just closed this place. So it was empty. Em uh, empty for how long? Like 
when for decades, but then 10 years ago, we had the possibility to reopen it. And when we reopen it, we wanted to, to stuff it with culture and invite the creatives and the cultural people again. Tell me about the inspiration for this place. Now, how did you sort of pull this together? Uh, uh, on one side, we have this very cozy interior, but on the other hand, we are working with real experts. And here we go. Amazing. Look at that. Thank you. I mean, I'll tell you what, art everywhere. Of course there's going to be art on the plate. Art on the plate. Isn't there? Look at that. Yeah, I told you. Right. So now you have a very top food and I have a more simpler food because a cafe house must have a, a possibility okay. to choose a very fancy food or just to have a very everyday food. That is beautiful. This food is really, really superb. Love it. Thank, thank you. you. I enjoy that you are here, so thank you. The food is actually always truly exquisite, as was everything else I tried today. It's incredible to see how the chefs and artisans of this city have really embraced the country's history and made it part of the dishes they serve. Cooking is a means of cultural preservation. It is a means of community building. And the people of Budapest are eager for you to dip into the local scene and try something delicious.